guys, welcome to Luis's Nero's YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. Today is about James Hansen's Muppet Babies Twins, a Skitter and Scooter tribute tutorial. That's right, join me while we create these two characters in polymeric clay. So we're gonna need red and yellow clay and we're gonna need armatures. If you don't know how to create an armature, please watch my video on how to create an armature. Then we're gonna need a proportional character chart that is gonna be available on my website and we're gonna create two armatures for the twins. We're gonna mix our yellow and red clay to create an orange color, so in that way we will create a piece of clay that belongs to each part of the body. So we're talking about ears, the head, the trunk, the arms, the hand, the legs. So each piece of clay you're gonna separate it for this and remember it are two sets since we're creating two characters. After that, you're gonna manipulate your armature in the position that you want your characters to be in. In this case, our characters are sitting, so you bend the wire and the position desired. Then, let's incorporate the piece of clay that we left designated for the trunk area into our armature. It's gonna have a pear shape, like the fruit. Just with the help of your fingers, you create this round shape. Do not leave any wire exposed in this area. A quick reminder, our characters are sitting, so I recommend that you press in a flat surface our trunks and that way it creates that sensation in that ACA. Then we're gonna use our four pieces that we left as in there for the legs and we're gonna incorporate it to our armatures. With these you're gonna need some molding tools to make sure that you can reach those small gaps that you have between the trunk and the legs. The way that I started is from a large cylinder and I pulled it where the knee goes. So, and I start incorporated into the wire. Then I start creating the shape of the calves and also the upper leg. After you finish your legs with your little tool, you're gonna draw a line to create the bump. With the flat tool, you create the shape of the two sheets. creating two characters we do exactly the same with the other we incorporate the legs we draw the line and we create the bump
Now is the time to create texture. So this is a chance to crack some areas that you want to reshape or exaggerate. Now we're going to put a belly button to our character and with your needle tool you create a hole where the belly button goes, then you leave a gap and with the other needle you draw a line around it to create that illusion of belly button. When you finish, you can bake. After that, we're going to measure our shoe size for our characters. We're going to need red clay for a scooter shoes and we're going to need pink clay for a skitter. They are exactly the same size, so make sure the two pairs of pieces of clay, they are the same size. And then we're going to save it for later because we're not going to create the shoes right now, but you need to create one shoe shape so you know exactly how much clay you're going to use. After you finish with the clay of the shoes, we're going to start with the clay for the shorts. The scooter is wearing purple shorts and the way that you going to create the purple clay it is with blue clay and a little bit of red. Remember just to mix it pretty well so you create an even color. After you have your clay mix, what are you going to do is you're going to try and proof on the top of your uh, character just to measure how much clay you need to cover the area for the shorts. This is the only way that you can try to tailor the shorts for your characters. After you have the correct size, you put it on your body and then you press really hard so it really attach to the already baked body. And use a tool just to make sure to reach in those edges that you can with your fingers. And then you start adding more clay to the back and to the bottom until you cover the entire area of the short. surrounds the entire leg section and after you make sure you can tailor it for the size that you need. Then you place it and you incorporate it to the short.
same thing with the other leg. We create another rectangle, measure it, make sure that it surrounds the entire leg section and then incorporate. legs we're gonna create the details of the short we're gonna create this spring that it goes on the top for this we're gonna require a large cylinder thin cylinder that we're gonna place just on the spring area we're gonna draw also the spring so that way we give the illusion of these details on the short Place the large cylinder. Don't forget to create the marks with your needle tools. So that way, it creates the illusion of the spring. After creating the purple short, you, you can bake it. Then we're gonna create exactly the same way the blue short for a skitter.
skitters and a scooter short. It is a skitter short and have legs at the end of the legs. And that's what we're gonna create. You're gonna make a large cylinder white with white clay. Then you're gonna flat with your flat tool, you're gonna create semicircles, and in those semicircles with your needle tool, you're gonna create some holes to simulate some texture. Then you're gonna place it at the end of the leg part of the short, but just inside. So that way it looks like it comes from inside the short. Then you're gonna create a really thin blue cylinder that is gonna be on the top of that lace and on the top of the edge of the short. So it creates another nice detail for it. another lace for the other leg. Just make sure that it's exactly the same size as the first lace. So I recommend that uh, always you can make them at the same time. So in that way they end to be exactly the same size so they don't look bigger or smaller. So again it's just a white cylinder and then um, you with your flat tool you create the semicircles and don't forget to uh, create the texture with your needle. of the short is done we're gonna create the spring for the top part don't forget this is a just really thin cylinder that it goes all around the top of the short then with your needle tool you're gonna create those marks to simulate the spring after baking our figurines so the shorts are curated we're gonna start working on our shoes. Remember those pieces of clay that we saved for later? Now we're gonna use them. So just a reminder, you're always shaping in pairs because there are two shoes. So when you're done, you're gonna create the part that the leg goes in and you're gonna use your rounder tool to create this hole. gonna need white clay to create the socks. For the socks you're gonna create a large white rectangle, you flat that and then you're gonna measure it to make sure that it goes all the way around on the end of the leg. Then you're gonna create a second rectangle to create the pair. After that, you make sure that you measure on the end of the leg so you cover the entire area and then you can place it. After placing the two socks, what are you going to create? It? The marks that the socks has just on the top so it looks they have a spring. Use your needle to create that illusion.
skitter herself. For this, we're gonna put a detail of lace. We create a large white rectangle that is gonna be flat, and on one side, we're gonna create those semicircles simulating the lace. and make sure that it goes all the way around and cut the extra clay. Create a middle line just to have more detail and also don't forget to create the holes for the lace in the socks. Then you can bake the figurine to create all the work. Finally, we're gonna start with the shoes. Just make sure that uh, the four shoes are exactly the same size. Remember, skitter shoes are pink, scooters are red. After you have the correct size of clay, you're gonna shape it into a shoe and just think about a sneakers or think about like kind of shoes that you want to create in this case like for me is kind of the, the sneakers that are some kids use so that's what I, 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 I create that shape with the rounded tool I create a hole where um, the leg is going in and remember we have uh, the socks on so just make sure that at that hole that you create it is big enough so they can go in We're going to start creating uh, the front part of the shoe after we insert the shoe into the leg. This part of white, um, it is the one that is in front of the sport shoes, so the sneakers or any kind of sport shoes. So we create a semicircle and we just put it on the front, just make sure that um, you have four of them since you have um, four shoes. So after you put it in front, just make sure it fits really, really, really well and make sure that you clean it pretty well since it's white. Then when you needle, you're gonna create those marks that are in the front hatch, just four lines. So you're gonna create a white sole for the shoes, for the sport shoes. Then with your needle, you're gonna create horizontal lines to create that texture that those sport shoes has. And with a bigger needle, you're gonna push so it gives a little bit of heel. Then just to remember in the front is surrounded and then you keep going with your horizontal lines to give that texture. So a quick reminder, you, after you shape your shoe, you put it on the sock. So just to remind you, you have a left shoe and a right shoe. To just make sure because the shape is completely different remember um, the bigger toe it goes inside so you want to have the correct size and shape of the shoe going to the direction that you want then you're gonna create the front part of the shoe that is the semicircle the white semicircle that it goes to the front and you're gonna give the texture with your needle just front lines. Then you create a white sole. So just make sure you create four of them so they are exactly the same size and again to the correct sense, uh, shape of the shoe. So after you measure it, you want to make sure that it fits your shoe and then you can put it under your shoe. After you do that, 
what are you gonna create is the or um, the heel and just that arc that it has inside of the part of the, the shoe so after you create the heel and that curve that it has inside that arc that it has inside you know create horizontal lines in the sole to create that um, that texture that the sole has for the sport shoes then when you a small rounded tool you're gonna create a hole where you think the, the ankle it is and that's just to give it a more detail to the shoe let's say where the, the logo will go then you clean it up with your brush and then what are you gonna do is just gonna have gray clay the gray clay you can mix a little bit of um, white Play with just a tiny tiny black clay so you do these holes in just on the left on the right side of the shoe and exactly in the same position where again you think the ankle goes then you're gonna create these mini gray spheres they have ex have they have to be exactly the same size then when you run the tool you're gonna press where you left the mark or the hole and you're gonna create these uh, just detail for the shoe so just make sure you don't press so hard and don't worry about the edge of, of the gray clay because you want to leave that uh, rounded semicircle after that we're gonna use the needle tool to create the eyelet top of the shoe and also the eyelids and the tongue so we're just gonna draw it on the top and just make sure that you use your needle tool the large needle tool so it allows you to draw it and with a brush you can clean it if it is not perfect you can uh, clean it with the brush and we draw it again So this is how it's gonna look um, with the eyelets and also with the tongue and the eyelet top. So now we're gonna create the shoelace and we're gonna use the same gray that we use for the detail on the side of the shoe. So just make sure that you create a long, long lace since we're going to use it for the four shoes. Then you're going to cut it in pieces and you're going to measure those pieces so that it can go across the entire top of the shoe. So from one hole to another shoe. When you have one that you measure, then you can cut the rest of them. And also it depends what kind of pattern you want to do in your own shoe. If you want to do it like an X or you just want to like look like all horizontal. So you, you can be creative on these. In my case I used the, the first one I used it I just across and then on the top I used an X. So it goes from uh, the bottom hole to the top hole and, and the other side is kind of the same. But it's up to you. And remember also you have to make the tie like it's like kind of a bow that you create so um, just to remind you, you you need to use clay for that too so that's the reason you use a lot of clay uh, in this case for the shoelace so um, when you are inserting the, the lace or the piece of clay one hole make sure that then you, when it goes across to the other side you insert it too and with the help of your needle you um, when it's inserted that piece of clay you create the hole a little bit bigger you insert the needle and you create the hole a little bit bigger since the clay uh, or lace feels that hole that you created previously to insert in that piece of clay. So again, when you insert it, um, just make sure that you make, um, after you insert the clay, you make bigger the hole. Then we're creating right now the tie that you do when you, when 
your lace. So what I did first is uh, I have a large piece of, of clay and then I fold it in half. So that's, that's the lace that is uh, left um, after you tie, after you create the bow. Then I, uh, I put it on the top of the, of the lace and then I create the bow and I put that on the top. So it is kind of a layer. Then we start with the other shoe and it's exactly the same. And don't forget when you finish your shoes to bake them. So that way when you're working with the rest of the body, you don't have to worry about damage them. We're gonna start with the shirt that they're wearing. So Skitter is wearing a green shirt that it has sleeves and also lace. So we, this is the only way to tailor is we're gonna create a rectangle that has a little bit of arc and we need to measure first that it fits and after we measure that it fits then we can put it on. If not, we can add or we can cut. This is the only way that I do it, is just to create the shape, measure it, and then make it a bigger, or make it a smaller, cut it, and tailor it until it fits. After it fits, I put it on and then I press just on the top what I want it to be really fit. And then on the bottom, I don't press so hard since I wanted like the fabric to be a little bit wavy and playful so it looks more real. And just to remind you, the character is showing a little bit of the tummy since it's a baby and so we can see the belly button. After finishing with your shirt and it's clean and even, we're gonna create with your uh, needle some marks that are at the edge of the shirt and it's gonna give the illusion of the stitching on the shirt. After you bake the entire figure in, we're gonna open the wire and we're gonna put the wire in the position that we want the arms to be. And in this case, she's holding her hands together, so that's the position that we will put the wire. After putting the wire in the position that you want, we're gonna use the clay that are we assinated for the arms. So there's gonna be two large cylinders that are they're gonna be already shaped and already measure in your size, chart, character, proportion, and we're gonna incorporate it to the armature. After you incorporate the two arms, what you're gonna create is the hands. And for the hands, we already left um, some clay for this, especially for this. So we're gonna create the shape of the palm and we're gonna left um, 
separating the fingers. So just to remember, we're gonna create a hand size shape and we're gonna cut the part for the fingers. And we're only gonna incorporate the two palms, not the fingers. incorporated the two palms what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the fingers so we're gonna need in total four fingers for each hand so just a reminder um, we have a bigger finger and then the point finger and then the small finger and the thumb so um, in terms of sizes remember the bigger finger it is the biggest then the second because it's the point finger, then it will be the thumb and then the smallest finger. The first finger that I will incorporate is the thumb on the right, and then we're gonna incorporate the second is the thumb on the left. And that will go with the point finger on the right and then the point finger of the left. Then the middle finger on the right and the, and the middle finger on the left. And the least we're gonna put it is just the a small finger and voila. Just to make sure you wanna measure those fingers really perfectly to make sure that it does the size that you want. start texturizing and you're gonna use your needle to do that just make sure to not affect the shape of the fingers and the hands and the arm so this is a chance when also you can exaggerate those um, shapes that you want and as soon as you finish um, texturizing you can bake it After finishing with the arms and hands, we're gonna start creating the, the sleeves. And the sleeves is just a sphere, and then we create with the rounded tool, we create the gap that uh, um, goes the arm in. You try it on the arm and see if it fits, and after that, um, you can make it a longer, you can make it a smaller. So after you know that it perfectly fits, that's when you can put it in and you do that with the help of your uh, flat plastic tool and with your needle tool don't forget also to put the marks that it has so uh, these marks is just to create the boldness uh, and just close uh, to the edge and that's just a detail that I has and remember we're gonna add also the lace
gonna create the lace and the lace is this pale yellow so you can create with yellow and adding just white mixing it together so we have created lace before so the way that you create it you create a large cylinder then you flatten it even and after that with your flat tool you're gonna create the semicircle just at one edge after that you create the ruffles and you put it just at the edge of the sleeve and those marks and they also help that uh, it is tightening up uh, the sleeve is tied up on the arm so you are uh, really careful without pressing so much the ruffle so in that way it doesn't stick together and then they let you manipulate them to surround the entire arm also don't forget with the needle tool just create a pattern of lace and that way it creates and that sensation again we're creating the other side of um, the sleeve and the lace and we're gonna do exactly the same as we did first just put it around it all the arm and after you do that and um, just try to clean it up with the brush if, or any tool that I do prefer and um, don't forget to really um, try to attach it really close to the edge of the sleeve and try to not leave any gap that's the most important part that's the reason we use the brush to really really put it really close to the edge of the sleeve and after creating the lace of the sleeves, we're going to create the lace where the neck is. So we're going to create a bigger lace, and so it's a bigger cylinder, and we're going to also flat it, and we're going to create the semicircles. The semicircles, usually I make them the same size as the sleeves, it's just uh, we need a, a longer cylinder because uh, you have to surround the entire part of the neck that is up the top of the shirt. creating the ruffles and uh, make sure that I, you measure um, and it really goes around in an even way so the ruffles they don't look in one side they are like really close and the other side they are really far you want to create it even and also make sure that I, you really do not leave any gap between the shirt and the lace because you can see the wire or you can see that uh, the head will not be attached to, to, to the body. After we finish the hands and uh, all the sleeves and the shirt, what we're gonna create is the head. For these, remember, we're gonna create two hats. Just make sure that you measure with your chart and you can see that shape. So in that way, uh, you can see how it looks like. Remember where are the cheeks, remember where is the face, and where are the eyes, where are the glasses gonna stand. And since you have one, you're gonna create the other one exactly the same since they are twins. So it's better to create it 
one at the same time as the other because you don't want it to make bigger or look as uh, one bigger than the other one and you don't look like it. you don't want them to look so different. So it should be, um, you, should, you should have three bumps. One is where the eyes goes, the other is the mouth, and two at the sides. When you finish, just at the back, you're gonna draw a line in the middle in the back of the head, and that's where the wire will go. And then you insert the head into the body, and you put it in the position that it will go. In this case, she's looking a little bit up, so make sure that I, you direct the head in that direction. We're gonna draw a line and that's gonna be our mouth. So after drawing the line and make sure that it is geometrical, you're gonna um, help with, your, with the help of your flat tool, you're gonna saturate that line, helping shape the lower lip and the upper lip. So the upper lip goes all the way with the nose, but the lower lip, it actually has this, uh, the shape of a lip. So make sure to exaggerate that with a uh, flat tool. So after you finish shaping them out, you're gonna texturize. And the way that I start texturizing it is in the upper part of the mouth and the continue where the nose is. So I start with a small line right in the middle of the nose, just right in the center, and then I continue all the way to the mouth. So in that way I help to exaggerate that separation between the uh, lower lip and the upper lip and mouth. We're gonna start creating the ears and the way that I create the ears is just by having a shape of a um, um, half circle and then I press with the round with the rounded tool just to create the, the interior of the ear. Then I push in a corner just from that shape that I have I push a little bit in the corner so in that way I have that interior ear. So if you can see, I push a little bit and there you have it. So that's the way, and then you attach it to the face. you can texturize the entire face and head. Don't forget just to follow the shape of the face when you texturize. Now we're gonna start creating the glasses. So I create a large cylinder and then I flatten and give it a curve for the temple, this is gonna be the temple of the glasses. Then I create um, four circles, white flat circles for where the glasses are. So I'm gonna put it on on foil, and this is because I'm just gonna bake all these white. There are gonna be four white circles, flat circles. So make sure that I put it on foil because we're gonna bake them. So before baking them, we flat them and we're gonna put a hole where you want the eye. Just make sure the four of them, they look identical. 
After putting a hole with the smallest round the tool, I put a tiny a small sphere of black. There are four of them that are identical and then we bake them. After you bake our white circles that are simulate our glasses, we're gonna keep creating the frame. So we're gonna create a cylinder, a large cylinder that is gonna surround our white uh, circle. And then when you have it like perfectly measured that it goes all around, you're gonna put it and you're gonna continue to do exactly the same for all the four parts. As you can see, we're creating gel strings that are surrounds the white circle, and this is the frame that uh, is gonna create the illusion of the frame. So for that, um, since we already baked them, it doesn't affect the white surface. So the purple glasses are gonna be for a skitter, and the brown glasses is gonna be for a scooter. After we create the rings and we create the two sets, what are you gonna want is to bake them, just the rings. Then we're gonna create our holes for the eyes and as the eyes are just a small black spheres that we're gonna put and then we will place our rings for our uh, glasses. So you're just gonna press down really carefully, not too close to the face, just leaving a little, a little bit of gap. And then we're gonna put our temples for the glasses just on the top of the ear and attach it to the rings. You do it on one side and you do it in the other side. Putting the glasses, what we're gonna create it is the hair and the hair is pretty simple uh, because it's just a um, cylinder that is just really small in the top and bigger in the bottom and it's gonna be with rounded uh, ends then you're gonna give it a shape of the hair as you can see it has those bumps and with your needle you're gonna create the texture of the hair in total of the head, three on the left and three on the right and they come really in the middle of the head, just on the top of the middle, really center and again you just texturize it, I just give it a turn and with the needle it goes really easy the texture of the hair. Just a reminder that you're gonna do the same with this gutter too. pieces, the two last pieces is going to be on the top of the other two, so that way you have three and they come in that way. You can see it in your, um, in your proportional chart, how the hair goes, but just make sure that it's really even in both sides. After we bake a skitter and she's done, we're gonna start with a scooter. So we're gonna start where we left, that is the shirt. So for the shirt, it is a really pale 
purple. So what are you going to do is you're going to add white to the left purple that you have from the shorts. So you're going to create that a pastel purple. So sometimes when you are uh, in this shirt and it is fresh clay you can leave fingerprints from the fresh clay into the uh, dry clay if uh, that happens you can wipe it up with the uh, wipes that you buy for cleaning hands um, the curated clay or the dry clay can handle that and just make sure to not leave behind any marks that you don't want when you're manipulating uh, fresh clay. To create the graphic that a, a scooter has in his shirt, I create another cylinder um, and then I flatten it and it will go around the shirt. It's just one prank that it goes on the top. So, and I create that color with the leftover of the clay and I just add a little bit, just a little bit of red to create a different color. the shirt is finished and clean and also the graphic I do the stitching marks and that way uh, with the with the needle I go around the graphic and also at the end of the shirt as I did with a skirt shirt Anyways, uh, for this figure, what I'm gonna do it is uh, my scooter is gonna be uh, beside her reading the book too. So in that way, um, that's the reason the hands are gonna be trying to hold that book. And that's the reason I need Miss Piggy. But uh, you can create separate the characters, they don't have to interact, so you can put the arms whatever you want, but um, as whatever you want, but in this case, my character is gonna do that, so I incorporated the piece of clay that I left for the arm that is exactly the same size as a skitter, so both of them they have the same size of arm, so uh, I incorporate it and then I texturize it. After incorporating one arm, I incorporated the, the second one, and again it's just a cylinder. Then I give it a little the shape of the arm before putting it in. So in this case, is um, where the elbow is. It has that uh, angle, so that's uh, that's the angle that I have to give since it is pointing. Uh, also, uh, it is holding on the top of the book, so just make sure uh, that again, if you want to like give a different, di let's say different movement or different position, you can do it. Then we're gonna start with the hands, and again, the way that I, you create the hands is just you create like the shape of the hands with closed fingers, and then you cut in the part where the finger goes leaving only the palm but you do it with both hands so just make sure that you have both hands so you put a mark where the fingers are and then you create also in the second hand you create that mark so they are exactly the same and then you cut it so that way you have the palm and you can shape
After separating the fingers, don't forget to mark at the fingers and then you're gonna shape the palm of the hand or um, half hand as I wanna call it. So then after shaping, you're gonna incorporate it to the arm and it's really easy. These will be, um, obviously the arm it will affect the position that you want your character to have and also the way that you want your hand to uh, be. So in this case, again, it's holding um, with one arm the book and the other uh, hand is gonna be on the top of the book. So in that way, I know what, what um, how it's gonna look. After putting um, my hand where I want it to be, I'm going to start creating the, uh, the fingers. So again, um, just remember where is your thumb and where are the other rest of the fingers. He only has four fingers in total, so you have to think about that. After creating the shape of the fingers, I create the other hand and again this is going to be uh, on the top of the book. So it is going to be folding a little bit the hand just to hold the book and I just attach it to the arm. Then we're gonna start putting our fingers. So again, in this case, um, it depends what position that you put the hand. Just make sure to know where exactly goes the thumb and where exactly goes the rest of the fingers. what I use is the needle tool so that way I can attach them really carefully without affecting one another just make sure that I you really attach them because if not they can break really easily
finish one hand, I start with the other one. Just uh, make sure that you give it that silhouette of uh, a hand. It has like a cartoon hand, but also looks really like a human hand without one finger. So, um, just again, I use the needle tool to get between the fingers. So, it's really easy when you get used to fingers don't forget that you need to texturize so that way uh, you can finish and you can bake after baking we're gonna create the sleeves and we have just these spheres that we create before where the arms will go and just measure that uh, it fits properly and it covers the entire shoulder. marks of the stitching at the edge of the um, sleeve so that way it has that detail as the same as the shirt so now we're gonna create a ring and this ring is gonna be the detail of the shirt where the neck goes so you're gonna create the ring and then after putting it you're gonna give uh, the marks that are the neck um, the shirt has that we're gonna draw the line where we're gonna cut the head so we can insert it into the armature we're gonna cut a little bit of the uh, wire and then we're gonna press down and we're gonna position the head where we want it in this case he's looking down there we're gonna draw the line of our mouth and then we're gonna do exactly the same with the flat tool we're gonna press down so we create the lower lip
created the lower lip and I start texturizing, we're gonna create our eyes. We're gonna make the holes where the eyes go and we're gonna put them just in the position that we want it to be. Just make sure to compare with skitters and that way they are exactly at the same position since they are twins. we're gonna create the ears and this is as I showed you before we create a quarter of a circle or a semicircle whatever you want to call it and then with our rounder tool we create the whole of the ear and then we press and uh, in the corner we create the interior of the ear we put them exactly the same Part that we put them for skitters and that way they have the same location and we texturize them. To texturize them we're going to put the glasses as we did with skitter. Then we're going to put the temple of the glasses and just to make sure that it goes on the top of the ear. Then we're gonna create the hole where the hair is gonna go for a, a scooter. And a scooter only has two pieces of hair, so that's gonna be really simple. So with the same color of the clay that we created for a scooter, we're gonna create almost the same part um, as we did, um, the same shape as we did for a scooter. And we're gonna give the same texture and we're gonna put on those holes that I would create for the hair. Just make sure that you put the two pieces of hair on the top and they're really centered. And after that, guess what? We are done! We finished! Congratulations!